So I had put out a poll on my YouTube channel asking if you guys would find it interesting to see some behind the scenes of what a Real Madrid journalist looks like. What happens at the stadium, press row, press conferences, all that stuff, and kind of just what happens in general in Madrid. So the overwhelming majority of you guys said yes, and a small percentage of you guys said no. So I went with the logical decision to listen to the guys who wanted this, and, the, and for those who didn't want it, you guys can just skip the video, no worries. So, I'll kind of show you a bit of Madrid too as I do this. And this is game day, so later tonight, going to the Bernabeu to cover the Leipzig game. First Champions League home game of the season. And uh, I'll kind of take you there in terms of, I always walk, I never metro or, or drive, I just love walking. I could walk like 30,000 steps with like nothing. So I walked to the stadium about two hours before, show you the atmosphere. Uh, you can walk with me up the stairs, get my press pass and all that stuff. So this is where it starts. It's currently, I don't know, I think it's almost 1 p.m. or something. So I'm gonna go do a workout. And that's how I start my day. So I did my workout. I always say like, those of you who travel overseas to Madrid for games and stuff, if you're jet lagged, it's basically bro science, but I, I found it to be true every time. If you go to the gym or do a workout, you're recovered. I'm not kidding. It's been the biggest travel hack I've ever had. So now I have about six and a half hours now before the game starts and really I, I like to go to the stadium about two hours before, so we'll say five hours. I have five hours to do some work, go over some news, do some editing, write in my book. And uh, I always have this rule basically where I never stay home. Unless I gotta do a podcast, because I'm at home enough for podcasts and stuff anyway. So basically my rule is I'll go out, do some work from coffee shops, cafes. You never know, you know what adventures may come your way. So basically, I always try to make it a point to go out as much as I can, see the city, do some work. Yeah, so gonna go do some work now. And uh, I'll check in with you guys right before the game. So I got here about one and a half hours before the game. I don't really care that much to see it because I'm desensitized to it, but if it's your first time or if you're not here that often, I would suggest coming around two hours before the game. That way you can just see the atmosphere and then you can get in the stadium early enough to see the players warm up. It's pretty amazing to see some of the stuff that like motor ship crews do naturally during warm-ups too. The stadium renovations. This is on the way to the press conference room. They have a new setup since the renovations have kind of gone further. A lot of great photos of Past great teams. Obviously, this one hit home. One of my favorite, actually, my favorite Real Madrid jersey of all time is this one, La Novena. So it's 12:30 in the morning right now. Just up the Bernabeu. Hopefully, no editing. Upload that, and I don't know. I'll be done by 3:04 if I had to guess. And I'm glad you guys are seeing this because. I think a lot of people feel like my life is just some this crazy adventure, which actually, actually it is. They're not wrong about that. Um, it's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of like red eye flights. A lot of adrenaline to keep me awake and going. A lot of fun. But it's also filled with a lot of menial tasks that you have to love. You have to, um, you know, sitting in a press room. <laughs> you have to grow to love translating things. You gotta grow to love sitting in a coffee shop all day, writing and writing and writing and writing and editing and editing and editing and editing, which I did not show on the video because I thought you guys would be bored to death. Um, and in the meantime, trying to keep people happy who want to see you because they don't really understand why you're just watching football all day and having coffee and trying to figure out why you can't come hang out. 
that's what my uh, backlog of text messages is all about. So you gotta love it. You gotta love it. You gotta be un- unapologetic. You gotta be on your own path. Um, so that's the life lesson I'll leave you with for now. Um, maybe I'll throw in a nugget every time I do one of these videos. I'll probably do one for the Atletico game, and then after that, probably won't do one until the Classico in October. But yeah, I'm gonna wait at Ewan's house. I'll check back with you guys after I finish the podcast with him, so you guys can see what time it is and to see how red my eyes are. So here we go. Just after 2 a.m. now. Just finished the podcast with Ewan. And so that was a little bit actually shorter than I thought I was going to be, but we discussed a lot, as you probably heard on the podcast by now. So, yeah. And uh, I haven't eaten supper yet. It's 2 30. I'm going to eat and edit and upload. It's me in the streets with a people, few people out and about. It is Spain, so people will always be out at any given time. And if I go like literally three blocks that way, it's just an entire, basically district of bars and clubs. What's up, Mari Disas? This is Kian Sabani from Managing Madrid. We are in Retiro Park in Madrid before we head to the Civitas Metropolitano to watch the Madrid Derby, which will be no doubt long done after you watch this video. But in any case, I'm here to give you guys some updates and give you guys our vision, what we have in mind for Mari Disas today. And if you've been following my work for a few years, you'll learn some new things about me today. And if you've been following my work for a few months or maybe just a year, you'll still find Uh, you'll actually find out more about me rather than you knew before. So I want to tell you guys what we do. So I am a Real Madrid journalist. What does that mean? That means when I wake up every single day, I live, breathe, and eat Real Madrid. I am press credential at the Bernabeu, which means that me, myself, and other members of the Managing Madrid staff, we go to the Bernabeu for every single home game as press. We cover the game. We cover the press conferences. Quite frankly, we go to quite a few away games as well. But that's what we do at the Bernabeu. We go there with our laptops like nerds and we take notes all game and we love it. And on the website, you'll find a lot of analysis. So again, when I say we live, breathe and eat Real Madrid, it means from sunrise to sunset. And quite frankly, from sunset to sunrise, knowing this club and the amount of coverage we do, we just live this club. Breaking news analysis, quotes from training, updates from training, from Valdebebas, what happens, who's injured, who's not, all that stuff. Um, A lot of tactical analysis. So what really sets us apart specifically is that we do have to cover the breaking news aspect of this club. But what we really love doing, and this is where my personal passion is, is nuanced tactical discussion on the club. It does not mean quick content. I don't really believe in quick content. Uh, begrudgingly, we just joined TikTok because we are in a generation of shorter attention spans. Uh, I don't love it because in a one-minute video, you can't provide nearly the amount of context that is needed because it's taken from a one to two to three-hour podcast. But instead of complaining about it and being an old man yelling at the cloud, we decided to join and ride the wave, and we're doing that now. But my hope is that TikTok becomes a portal for people to get sucked in and actually join our longer form content. So what sets us apart is that we really, really go deep. If you've read my columns that go up weekly, I write anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 words. Some people find that psychotic, I find that art. I've always believed that journalists should be artists. I'm not really part of the reporter clan, although I respect the grind, but I've always thought that journalism is an art. So in my articles, I like to tell stories. I like to go in and watch film and study it, clip footage, put it in my article so you can understand what I'm saying when it comes to tactical analysis. I provide the examples to provide the most unbiased, nuanced take possible. And everyone at Managing Madrid does the same. And while we do the written side of things, we also do the podcast side of things. So you can get our podcast anywhere you get your podcast app, 
most people until now, they just listen to us on their commutes, whether it's, you know, going to work, going to the gym, at the gym while they're cooking, whatever, cleaning the house. But there's been more demand now for video content. And so we've also just recently joined YouTube, which is the channel you're watching this on today. Possibly you're also listening to this on the podcast. I'm not sure. But if you're watching this, you will notice that the quality of this video is infinitely greater than what you're used to seeing on this channel. And that's because we are trying to invest back in the show. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm being really transparent with you guys, gonna be very honest with you guys, we are in a really, really tricky spot as a growing podcast right now. When I first started to do this podcast, we did anywhere from 1.5 to 2,000 downloads per episode. And that was in 2015. Right now, we are at 200,000 downloads per month. And that is part of the reason why we're in this weird spot where like 200,000 may seem like a lot to a lot of people, and it is considering where we came from, but to me, it's a drop in the bucket because my vision for this is to go all out and go until the end and really, really grow it way more than it's already grown. And for that reason, I really want to have increased quality because the more and more people watch the show, they like the content itself, but I know that there's been feedback that the quality of the, uh, I guess, the technical side of things, the video and the audio t- side of things could be a little bit better. So we invested in microphones, but our cameras are still a little bit uh, uh, old school and they could be upgraded. So hence why this video looks way better than you're, what you're used to. And where we want the show to go is we want to invest more into the show and have a studio in Madrid where we can get journalists who come and go. We want, you know, we have, we are so well connected that you guys have no idea. Basically everything we write, everything we put out, we check with the, our club sources, we check with uh, players, agents, players, family members. We have plenty of former Real Madrid players in our WhatsApp and in our phone book. And that gives us the most detailed and accurate analysis possible. What we want to do is we want to bring these journalists and heavy heavy hitters, if you will, into the podcast and into the studio. And we also want you guys to be a part of it. So we want to upgrade basically the audio visual experience for you guys. We want to increase our content. We're already doing five to seven podcasts per week. But when I say we're doing this full time, I really mean we wake up and we cover this team in video, audio and written form every single day. So we're going to go even more deeper in on this. And I get a ton of messages from people who want to come to Madrid and, you know, take me out for coffee or meet us and and say hi. And while I would love to be able to do that to every single person who messages me and uh, be able to do that because I love meeting you guys. And that's part of the reason why we've done so many in-person podcasts all around the world. We follow Real Madrid's preseason tour in the U.S. We've done podcasts in Spain. We've done podcasts in London. Uh, We did a podcast in India recently. Uh... We love meeting you guys. That's why we do those podcasts in person is because we want to grow the Real Madrid family. That's basically, that's our mission statement. We want to connect the hearts of Maradistas all around the world. Because me personally, when I grew up, I lived in a small town in Canada. I was like the freak who just talked about Real Madrid and I had no one to talk to because everyone liked hockey. So as I meet people around the world, I realize that a lot of you guys are in that same situation too. You would love to meet other Madridistas to go to bars with, to watch the games together, to hug other Madridistas and celebrate instead of doing that by yourself. So we want to, we're in this to also connect the hearts in addition to providing value for you guys through analysis. So to systematize meeting more people in Madrid, we want to set up a thing where we do monthly events in Madrid revolving the biggest games of the month which means most people will be in town for that month. That'll give, get us, I guess, the best way to just kind of catch everyone who's in town for the biggest game. We're going to do live podcasts that are for free and also just turn them into a huge, epic Maridista party. And so that is part of our future goals. And we're hoping to do that maybe by Christmas, but certainly by 2023, we're aiming to do that. And we're going to go full force on that. So where do you come in? Well, you're already in on this if you're watching likely. But if this message resonates with you, if you like to get away from the sensationalized news, the drama, a lot of the controversy that happens behind the scenes, and you're more just interested in higher level, nuanced, tactical discussion, then I would invite you to join our Real Madrid family. If you go over to patreon.com slash managing you can click the link in the description of the video. You will kind of get a look behind the veil of what we do. You get two to three exclusive podcasts per week that are 
only behind the paywall at patreon.com slash managing Madrid. And you get a ton of value in return. You get to join the ever-growing Real Madrid family. And we would love to see you on the inside. And that way you can actually join us on the yacht. We don't want you guys to be on the outskirts while we're on the yacht partying and doing these epic muddy Dista parties. We actually want you guys to come on the yacht with us and party with us. And that's what we're trying to do. That's what these epic muddy muddy Dista parties are all about. And I thank you for watching this video. And we'll see you on the inside. Hala Madrid. Peace out.